So our time is coming to an end with Nottingham Forest. We've got two games left. Can we get enough points to beat Barnsley? So following on from the last episode, our form hasn't been that great. We started with a 3-0 away defeat against Manchester City. Not a good performance from us. We then had a one all draw against Bristol City. We completely dominated this game, but just didn't create that many good opportunities. They actually took the lead in the 27th minute and Karimi eventually equalised in the 67th. We then had a pretty good 0-0 draw at home against Chelsea. We were pretty much on the back foot for the entirety of the game, but a decent point. We then went away from home against Manchester United and got beat 2-1. Two early goals from them inside 16 minutes. Nakamoto for us in the 45th, but we didn't have enough to get back into it. A rare win in this little run. A 3-0 home win against West Ham. Eddie Le Chavre with a brace. Marco Antonio with the other. And uh, the best performance of the lot. And finally, it was a 3-1 home defeat against Arsenal. We've played a lot of the big boys in the past 10 games or so, and we haven't really covered ourselves in all that much glory. Eddie Le Chavre with the only goal for us in that game. And that sees us lie in sixth position. Champions League football is out of the question with only two games remaining. We're on 63 points. Barnsley got 64 points. So we've got two away games today to see if we can try and beat it. The first of which is against Aston Villa and the second is against Wolves. Now Villa and Wolves are both pretty decent sides sitting in 10th and 9th. Uh, so they are pretty similar to our sort of level and away from home as well. It's not going to be an easy thing but we need one win or two points. One win or two points please. So not too many injury concerns to speak of. So this is how we will start. Magyar in goal, Opara, Balas, Fukushima and Lucas Pinter in the defence. Karimi, Marco Antonio, Nakamura and Yemeljanov in the midfield. Eddie Le Chavre and Goga Calvo leading the line. A pretty quiet opening 10 minutes or so. But we have our first highlights in Aston Villa corner. Um, I'm not even sure what happened. Did we block that? Did they block that? No idea. 25 minutes in now, we're on the attack with Karimi, Nakamoto, they are pressuring us quite heavily, so we'll have to be careful in possession and avoid a counter-attack. Lucas Pinter drives into the box, whips it in, it's cleared, and Tavares can come away for Aston Villa down this left-hand side. As you can see, our midfield is pushed highly up, so we're getting back in numbers, but we're not getting the challenge, and Karimi finally makes the challenge, and Shavriak can bring it forward. Now he's got Gort Calvo in support. He doesn't actually use him. He goes back Opara down this right-hand side. Whips it in. Calvo with a good header. And he hits the post. Eddie Le Chavre manages to get it in. In the end. That was a little bit ridiculous. Goto Calvo should definitely have scored that second opportunity. At the very least, we'll see it again here. Opara whips it in. Goto Calvo with a header. Great save by the keeper. And then he misses an open goal. And Scaparoni hits it off Eddie Le Chavre. And he is the beneficiary of that defensive mistake. But Goto Calvo, I mean, please. De Silva with a free kick. Whips it in. Magyar pu punches it clear. I mean, Magyar. I've, uh, that's the first time I've started questioning your ability. You should be catching that. Tremoni comes down the right-hand side for Villa. Scaparoni to Willock. Got loads of space on his left-hand side for Sassinia. Marco Antonio is there, though, to dispossess him. And he plays the ball forward to Goto Calvo. And uh, we slow things down. Opara drives down the right-hand side, finds Antonio in the box. He goes for goal, a good save by the keeper. But at the second time of asking, Marco Antonio puts it into the back of the net for his 11th goal of the season. Half an hour in now. It looks like we're going to get that win. I mean, let's not speak too quickly. We might not get the win. But uh, at least a draw, which would mean we need a point from the Wolves game. So 2-0 in, 35 minutes gone. We will take that all day. Sassinia whips it in for Villa. We do manage to get a clear. Yemeljanov picks it up. Boots are clear to Le Chavre and we are catching Villa on the counter every single time. Got a Calvo to Antonio on the right. He shoots. He shouldn't be. And he saves. And there we have it then. Aston Villa nil. Nottingham Forest 2. A fantastic first half by us. Let's kick off for the second and hope for more of the same. First highlight of the second half. It's Villa again coming down on that right hand side. They seem to be having a lot of the possession and a lot of the attacking player comes down this side. Scabaroni coming down. Pinter gets the challenge in. Are we going to counter once again? He finds Yemeljanov. He's got three ahead of him if he should need them, but he's driving forward into the box. He's going to shoot. Yep. Yep, he's going to shoot. The Chavrier receives the ball from Lucas Pinter. He's driving down the left. He gets dispossessed and Villa will build from the back. Oh, we pinch it. Yemeljanov does well in the midfield to win the ball back and we give it away, but thankfully uh, Aston Villa can't keep possession themselves. Lucas Pinter to Le Chavrier. Come on, that is a great goal. Got a Calvo 
with an absolutely fantastic header to head it down for Eddie Le Chavrier. And we find ourselves 3-0 up, 52 minutes in. Probably a little bit undeserved this. Uh, Villa are having a lot of possession and things like that, but we're definitely making a pair when it counts. So Le Chavrier has got 11 goals for the season now. He's only been with us since January, so that's an absolutely fantastic return from him. We're not exactly seeing that sort of form from Gorka Calvo, which is a little bit disappointing considering how much we appeared for him and how much the toe. Oh, and just as we speak about it, he gets his fourth goal of the season. But um, he has been a little bit of a disappointment, let's be quite honest. And um, the change to the two-striker formation hasn't really paid dividends for us. The second half of the season has been pretty disappointing. And uh, uh, you live and you learn. So with 20 minutes to go, we will look to make some changes. Yamelzinov's looking pretty tired out there. We'll get Lee Pierce on for him on the left-hand side of midfield. We'll put Karimi off. We'll bring Nakamoto in the defensive midfield role. And we'll bring on Christian Morgensen in the centre of midfield. I would like to bring on Jamie Coyle. We will know what we want. He's not coming on. <laughs> I'm not taking off either of the strikers when they're in this good of form. And 15 minutes to go. Hopefully we can get one more. And time has just ticked away. And there we have it. Aston Villa nil, Nottingham Forest 4. That's been our best performance of the second half of the season. And uh, I'm very, very pleased. We managed to beat Barnsley. That's all that mattered. Uh, I don't think I'm going to live come the Wolves game then because there's not a lot to play for at this moment in time. Uh, 66 points, we're five, five points away from Manchester United. We can't overtake them. We're four points ahead of Chelsea. We can't be overtaken by them. So this is just a game to see if we can rack up a couple of more points to uh, put Nottingham Forest in a decent position in the leaderboard. Well, you didn't miss too much. A 2-0 away defeat to Wolves to wrap up our season. A little bit of a disappointing way to end it, but we did manage to get the points to beat Barnsley. So I would consider that a success. A newly promoted side getting over 60 points, getting 66 in the end, is always a, a massive, massive achievement. It just does peel a little bit in comparison to what we've been able to do at a few other clubs. But um, I think we can consider ourselves relatively pleased with how we've done with Nottingham Forest. So we're at our end of season. Let's see what happened. N N Nakamoto got a fan player of the season. Karimi in second. David Ballas in third. Marco Antonio with the goal of the season. Nakamoto signing of the season. And young player. He was a very, very good player. 24, well, 25 million. I think we ended up paying for him. He is absolutely phenomenal. He was worth every single penny. He got 12 goals and 11 assists from central midfield. And uh, out of all of our signings, I think we can be most pleased with him. We'll take a look at this goal. So it was in a relatively recent game against West Ham United. Elias Chavria bringing down the ball on the left-hand side. Pinter picking it up after that, finding Antonio, and then pretty much an excellent strike. And that was our goal of the season. <laughs> I'm a little bit disappointed with that. So match of the season was apparently the 2-0 home win against Barnsley in the very first year. I'm not sure about that moment. I forget this one's definitely correct. The 5-0 uh, weird defeat against Southampton in the January period, I believe, was pretty disappointing. 99% uh, full, average attendance is fantastic and uh, lost in the fifth round of the, against Chelsea, lost in the quarterfinal against Huddersfield in the domestic cups. Not too bad of a season, I would say. In terms of the club vision and stuff, it obviously has reset for the next season, so we're only on a B plus, I believe. It was an A plus after getting the uh, sixth place position we ended up getting. It looks like they're wanting mid-table for next season, uh, where when we did update our Season expectations was attempt to avoid relegation, so uh, attempt to avoid a relegation fight. Sorry, so that's why we're on an A plus. We obviously far outstripped that. I think when we look back on this season, I think we'll see some mistakes I made in the January. I think the signing of both Eddie Le Chavrier and Gorka Calvo sort of messed with us a little bit. I wanted to play them both. Uh, Gorka Calvo came in. I mean, he got a decent average rating: four goals and four assists in fourteen games from a star striker isn't exactly the output you're sort of wanting. Uh, so I do think I should have just stuck with one. It probably would have been Eddie Le Chavrier. He was cheaper. He was the first available. And uh, it would have seen us being able to maybe focus my attention on other areas of the pitch that maybe could have done with strengthening a little bit more. And we could have stayed with our tactic, which was tried, trusted, uh, tested and approved, rather than the thing we ended up playing, which I don't think, I think there's definitely promise in this sort of system. Um, and we definitely had some good early results. The Spurs game, the Barnsley game, the Liverpool game, uh, they were all with using this tactic. It wasn't until we suffered our first defeat against uh, Chelsea where things started to change for the worse in the final nine games or ten games or so. 
Nakamoto claims Young Player of the Year for the season. Absolutely fantastic. And uh, there's definitely some players in this Nottingham Forest squad that if we were to conceive of a best overall 11 throw, all the clubs would manage. I think the likes of Nakamoto would definitely be in it. Um, but probably that would be it in terms of players. Maybe Magyar, he was a fantastic goalkeeper. He's still got room to improve. He is wanted by uh, Atletico Madrid, so he could end up leaving. He's got a £58 million minimum fee. But that's the problem for the next manager. So we will be resigning our contract from Nottingham Forest and we will be looking for a new club in the championship. And there is one job available already. Maybe it might be Crystal Palace next. Oh, but before we go, we have to have a look and see where our other club... Oh, Barnsley got relegated. Barnsley are relegated. There's our second club dropping out of the top division. Huddersfield and Birmingham, obviously, staying in the league. Did Leeds get promoted? I don't think they did. Leeds ended up finishing in 10th. And the Crystal Palace job is available, but if they win the playoff final, I will not be taking over Crystal Palace. So we'll have to wait and see the outcome of that final but Leeds will be in the championship for next season uh, we will be facing them at some point I haven't quite decided on what the rules would be if the Leeds job became available again they have some absolutely phenomenal players who of course we signed they've still got Cedric for goodness sake he's literally one of the best defensive midfielders on the game uh, he is currently wanted by Milan and Real Madrid he's transfer listed by request 92 million pounds is what I would be wanting Leeds not 69 but yeah, it's, it's highly unlikely that their job's going to become available anyway. They have still got their manager in place. And despite finishing 10th, he hasn't been sacked. So there is the updated leaderboard. Nottingham Forest sitting in there in 4th position, just above Barnsley. Uh, both finished in 6th position in the Premier League, but uh, Nottingham Forest had a couple of extra points. And uh, that's not too bad. I think Barnsley is always the target for a newly promoted side at this point, And we matched it at least this time. So anyway, boys... If you have enjoyed my time at Nottingham Forest and if you're looking forward to the next club, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.